Hi and welcome to all the racing fans and enthusiasts out there around the globe who will be following the meeting on Friday the 5th of April, Fairview Turf Track and looking at the card, the first race duel for 12.50, an eight race programme. Joining me on the line is the resident expert, none other than Grant Paddock. Firstly, Grant, how are you doing? And then secondly, what are the weather patterns around your side of the world? Yeah, morning Sheldon, morning Panthers, yeah, all good this side, I'm alright, no complaints. Um, weather at the moment been very good, we've had a good couple of days, but there's a, a bad weather expected for the weekend, I see there's a bit of rain predicted for tomorrow at the course, so um, Panthers just needs to have a look at that, and then some heavy showers on Saturday and Sunday, but um, hopefully it can delay us a couple of hours if we can get through the meeting with no hassles, it is a grass meeting, so um, let's hold times at that weather, bad weather stays away. There we go. Let's get straight into race number one, which is the opening leg of the first exotic, the bar pot, where you've gone with number three, Magdala, and also number six, Project Runway. And just having a look at the scratching, scratched the early stage of recording is number seven, Sandy's Princess. Grant, I see they've priced up number nine, winner share from the Adam Kreef stable with Richard Ferry up as the 22 to 10 favorite. Any word on the ground? Yeah, um, no word on the ground. Very quiet with regards to this horse. I must be honest with you. Normally by now, um, the dogs would have been growling and barking. But uh, once again, this is the old thing. Mark up Alan Creef, Richard Furrier's favourite, and then we'll take it from there. Um, yeah, no talk for winners share. There's a bit of talk for Miss Predator and Project Runway. Um, put, doing good work back at home. Of the racehorses, Magdala, I think, has now found the right race. She's been running over 1,200s and... I think the 1,000 metre will suit. She's a very, very quick filly. I know they're hoping to try and settle her for the first 200 before she strides along. It's not going to be easy. But of the race runners, Magdala, definitely um, the, the best of them. And um, then from, as I said, uh, there's a bit of talk for Project Runway and Miss Predator as well. I've gone in the I've gone in the, the bipods. I've gone three, for three and six. Those two should get you through. And if you want to go a little bit wider, you could probably add in the five. Right, let's move on to race number two, which is due for 13.25. It'll be down the lane once again, 1,200 metres. And just looking at the current betting, they have number four, Global State, from 15 to 10 is shortened down 12 to 10. Number six, Sweet and True, from 18 to 10 is now 2 to 1. And number eight is Can't Say No, 7 to 2, Richard Ferry for Alan Griff. Now looking at the field, can't say no, that is a filly. And just looking at the rest, they are all boys. So the one filly taking on the boys here. However, number four, Global State makes a strong claim. 15 to 10 down, 12 to 10. Third to Sylvanian first time out. And then second to Golden Rule, second time out. And those two runs, course and distance, will stand the sun of Global View in very good stead for the victory. Yeah, 100% Sheldon. This horse opened up 28 to 10 and that uh, was a crazy price. He'll probably jump around 7 to 10. He's a very, very decent horse. He got beaten by a very, very good horse from the Michelin Yard in Golden Rule last time out and he's very highly touted. Uh, sweet and true is his only danger. The filly can't say no. Um, very nice first run. I think she's going to be looking for a touch further. Uh, Richard gave her a nice educational run. She'll be in the back end of uh, the quartet. Uh, same with Deco Var. He'll be, he, he improved last time out and improve even further but very very strong on global, global state and um, hunters can actually start their multiples with this horse on friday that'll take us on to race number three and when we step into the territory of race number three 1400 hours this will be around the turn over 1400 meters so the first race to see how they negotiate the turn and it's got that nice long run in Having a look at the early scratchings, number one, Battle of Kursk is scratched, number four, Active Power, and also number nine, First Master. So there were 13 runners, we're now down to 10. Does that make it any easier for you, Grant, with numbers three, seven, and eight? Yeah, it, it obviously does. Uh, a horse like Spec Magic now comes into an eight draw, which is a hell of a lot better than eleven. Uh, so he, he's he's got to get closer to the reckoning. My value bet on the day is Master of Defence. I think cutting back to the fourteen hundred strong front runner, getting weight. Um, I 
think he's going to be a very hard horse to beat. I think there's some very good value around there. I see once again that the two-year-old from the graveyard has been back to favourite. My best shot. Uh, I think you'll I think you'll find it difficult against the older horses. To be very honest with you, especially giving way to them to some of them. So um, yeah, I, I really like Master of Defence. I've taken him to beat Spec Magic. Then then uh, the eight-horse five-star Magic is going the trip for the first time fully against the boys, and then only the two-year-old My Best Shot. But I'm actually quite strong on Master of Defence in this race. Well, there's no reason not to be strong on number seven, Master of Defence, as it is an open handicap. So take note of the structuring of the weights. You've got a horse like number two, Electric Storm, a three-year-old carrying 60 and a half kilograms. And then you've got the two-year-olds carrying 57 kilograms, numbers five and six. Spec Magic's got 58. And Grant's horse, number seven, Master of Defence, he's a four-year-old and he'll be carrying 56 kilograms. So the weights will certainly be in the favour of number seven, Master of Defence, and he could be spot on in race number three. Stepping into race number four, where your best bet on the card is number one, Luna Halo, who is currently trading at even money. Just having a look at this early time of recording, there's no scratchings. And Grant, when you get a horse like this daughter of fire away and she's won seven out of 11, she absolutely loves the course and distance, one from one, five at the course and two over the distance. Richard Ferry knows her exceptionally well and we all know why you've made her the best bet on the card. Yeah, 100% Sheldon, I think this is her absolute best distance, she really battles to get a mile, I know she, she won one last time out but she was all out, back the 200 metres, uh, the only concern is a three year old carrying 62 kilos but you know, purely there's lack of opposition, yeah, there's a couple of one time winners and um, to take her on but she's in super form, you don't want to knock a, a, a good horse, Andrew Dance is her biggest danger, she's she's been run second, third, second her last three starts, so she's got to be there and thereabouts from from draw one with Louis up there's no doubt but um, Luna Halo you can't go against a, a good or so uh, nap bet for the day Luna Halo right let's move on to the next heat which is race number five so we'll move into the territory of race number five 15 15 is the card at off time down the straight 1000 meters at the early time of recording you can take out number four Commerson's passion. So take out number four, and that'll leave us with 10 runners going down to the start. Looking at the betting, number one, Ferrando is at 18 to 10 from the Kelly Mitchley stable. So Grant will give us a nice insight on how number one, Ferrando is doing. Number two, Mr. Bedacious is 33 to 10. Number six, the Lady Love is five to one with number seven, Great Times. And then it's seven to one and better the rest. Having a close association with the Kelly Mitchley stable, number one for Rando. You've included this with numbers two and ten in the bar pot. Tell us a bit about Ferrando and his recent forms knocking on the door. Yeah, 100% Sheldon, knocking loudly on the door, very good workouts on Wednesday, uh, the Michelin Yards best runner on the day, no doubt, um, it's between him and Mr. Bodacious, there's not, there's very little to choose between the two of them, um, hopefully it doesn't rain, because uh, that'd probably be a negative, uh, and then bring in the likes of uh, Jackson, Mississippi, uh, and great times into the race, but uh, I do like Ferrando, I think he'll win the race from Mr. Bodacious, then the 10 Jackson, Mississippi, and great times but um yeah mr uh, um Ferranda for me uh, is sheldon next hit will be race number six as we step on the gas 2000 meters will be the distance it'll be around the turn at 1545 so race number six due off at 1545 and the distance is 2000 meters now the betting says number one central city richard Ferry for alan kreef two to one Number three, Light Without, 33 to 10. Number four is 5 to 1. Number two, Spin Doctor at 6 to 1. And after that, you can take 7 to 1 and better the rest. Let's kick off with number one, Central City. Fresh off a victory, beating Downing 7 last time out. One victory on the turf, one victory on the poly. But you put, put Alan Kreef and Richard Free to, Puri together, and they're a devastating combination. Yeah, they are devastating combination. There's no doubt about it. This horse, I think, prefers the the, the the poly. He won a good race last time out in the poly. He's definitely not a two-to-one shot. Um, uh, 
Uh, number three, Light was out, an exceptionally good run at pinnacle level last time out. Loves the course and distance. Very, very hard horse to beat. He falls good with him. He'll be a very tough nut to crack. He came to the course, I think, two weeks ago and he was scratched running a temperature. Um, if, if he's got over that and he's fit and well, he'll take a power of beating here. Yeah, that last run in the pinnacle was very, very good against far stronger than this. So I'm strong in the camp of Light without Central City. We'll probably chase him home with uh, P and Light and uh, nothing else matters and the lurker in the pick six year horse is doing very good work at home number seven magical midlands right let's move on to the headline of the afternoon which will be the glen air trophy the glen Lair trophy race number seven at 16 15 2800 meters so it's going to be a test of stamina the anti-post betting has number two Bournemouth at 16 to 10 and that's from a price of 22 to 10 but I see number four the future is bright is scratched so there will be deductions there seem to be some deductions there and we'll keep a close eye on the betting so Bournemouth 16 to 10 number six Medless Tart is five to two after that, number three, Peace in Our World at four to one, and then nine to two about number one, Zatora Magic. Now, when you look at the best weighted column, number six, Medlis Tot, tops the board at 100. Number one, Zatora Magic's at a 97, with number three, Peace in Our World, and also number five, Castle Town. So, when you look at the best weighted column, there's not going to be a lot to separate them. Where do we go in race number seven over the 2,800 meter trip grant? Um, Sheldon, uh, lovely staying races, I must be honest with you, Glen Lair Trophy, uh, I'm very strong in the camp of Bournemouth, um, a very good run last time out, behind the likes of Medler Start, I think it's a kilo better off, uh, last time out they gave Medler Start the race on a, on a platter with all the trimmings, she got away from the field probably 10, 12 lengths and the other guys fell asleep and Louis stayed on, rode a very good race, she won't get away with it on Friday, there's no doubt about that, Richard will have Bournemouth a lot closer than, than Kendall did and um, I'm expecting Bournemouth to win and win very comfortably. He loves the course and distance. Um, 15 to 10, well, 22 to 10 was a very good price. I think he'll start shorter than the current 15 to 10. And um, to chase him home, probably medalist, hard piece in our world and Zatara's magic. But yeah, very, very strong on Bournemouth. Right, now ending the meeting will be race number eight, and that'll be down the lane over 1,200 metres. And this is where things start to get a little bit more trickier. They are bidding seven to two the field with number four. Holly's View, the daughter of Global View, Richard Ferry and Alan Kreef, off a victory beating Lady Mallorca last time out. A strong late run on that occasion. And looking at this individual, a course and distance victory. So big respect for number four, Holly's View. Number eight, Fairy Trip from the Mitchley Stable, nine to two. So Grant will fill us in how Fairy Trip has settled into the new surroundings. 37 days ago was last seen out at Hollywood Bets Grable. Number one, Symbol of Love is six to one. Miss Sharvey's at seven to one. And then Grant, I'm going to start off with a little bit of value. Number six, Rima. At around about 10 and 12 to 1, if you go back earlier in the form line, under six lengths behind Luna Halo, and second to Rosa Bayou, has dropped down to a 70 in the ratings. Where do you put number six, Rima, at around 10 to 1? Yeah, very good pick there, Sheldon. I have definitely got her in my place. She's in my first four. There's no doubt it was a very good run last time out and dropped significantly in the ratings. Um, symbol of Love and Holly's View, they both won very good races last time out. Holly's View, seven-point penalty. Symbol of Love, five-point penalty. I was at the, actually at the course when Symbol of Love won it. She really, she looked a picture in the parade ring and she won absolutely as she wanted to. Um, big runner, but unfortunately, once again, um, three-year-old filly, 62 kilos, not going to be easy. This is the trickiest race of the card. Obviously, we've gone a lot, we've gone very light early on in the, in the day. And um, uh, if you're traveling in the pick six, you need as many as possible, yeah, preferably the field. With regards to Ferry Trip, showing very, very good work. Probably their second best runner, according to the stable on the day. Very, very good work. Put up some very good gallops. So they're expecting a, a, a top run. The, my first four past to post, I had one, four, a six, and eight in no order. Um, and uh, after that, um, it's pretty much anything. Miss Shavey is, of course, coming from, uh, Derb, uh, from Johannesburg. Might find this a touch on the sharp side, um, the 1200. Probably going to be a little bit better when she goes 14 mile. But um, very tricky race, Sheldon. Uh, hopefully one, four, six, and eight will get us through. 
Well, there we go, looking for race number eight, throwing in a few runners, and my value bet will be number six, Riemann, around 10 to one, as you heard from Grant in his top four selections, and in a wide open contest, you can do no worse than have a few rand each way, and hope for the best. As is the norm, thank you very much, Grant. We really value your input, and more than not, you spot on, and you find the winners and the value out there for the punters, and they really appreciate it. So we're gonna bring up your suggested bets for the day, and if you can go through those bets for all your legion of followers out there. Thank you very much, Sheldon. Best bet, race four, number one, Luna Halo. My value bet on the day is race three, number seven, Master of Defense. And my suggested bet is a bipod goes as follows. We open up with three and six by banker four, by three, seven, eight, by banker one, by one, two, ten, by one and three for 36 rand. Well, thanks very much, Grant. Have a terrific day's racing, and let's hope that the horses do it for us on the track. Thank you very much, Sheldon, and have a good day to the punters. Goodbye. Well, thanks very much to Grant Paddock. He's given us the highs and the lows of the meeting, an eight-race program, and now it's up to the horses to run as fast as they can and do the business for us on the racetrack.